I mean, there are different core values that we all have, and so again, making sure you align both from someone who's asking you for help and even for you, even professionally. I think that alignment is actually critical. The, again, in most cases, it tends to be a close collaboration. Well, some people like to collaborate more than others, and some people are looking for you know, more warmth or gnosis in the collaboration than others. Again, it's all about alignment. It's not one is good or one is bad. It's a matter of alignment of what people are looking for. The structured career planning, I think, is really critical for people getting going through these transitions. So, for example, a young faculty um, beginning, um, every, you know, all the literature, all the experiences is moving much more towards a, a structured process from the standpoint of, okay, I'm, you know, I can't be your mentor until you tell me what is it you're trying to achieve, okay, and let's do very, it very becomes a, you know, a, a process of saying, who are you, what are you good at, what are you trying to achieve, and then how do we come up with a plan of getting there, but until you've gone through that process of articulating this plan, yeah, it's kind of like going down a trip without a road map. You know, it just, you really don't know where you're going to end up. And so you end up, you know, not necessarily getting anywhere or potentially getting to the wrong place. And again, but the still, and then part of that then becomes a skill development. So as a, so for example, you have a younger faculty that you're, you're mentoring, and the two of you say, you know, what I really need is I need to learn how to do this. And you say, that's nice, I don't know how to do that either. So let's find a way for you to learn how to do that. But until you kind of get it very closely aligned, it may not be able to say, oh, well, if that's what you need, I can't, but I know somebody else who does. You know, again, that, so that gives you the permission to be something specific, but not be everything. And again, I think that's what can make these things actually work and not be, you know, and not get bogged down. So if you think about it, uh, a question I almost ask is, how many roles it can or should a single mentor fill? So again, it says, it's teacher, sponsor, advisor, agency. To me, yeah, I look at this, I think, my, my goodness, this is a huge, tall order. And how much time are you given for this in your department? You know, and how much credit do you get for it in promotion yourselves? That's probably the biggest failing of the academic community there is, I think, is this inability or the, uh, the unwillingness to actually allocate time and actually acknowledge the time and energy we spend in development of future generations. Other than if you're not actually teaching a formal course, it just kind of doesn't show up anywhere. Or the issue of being, you know, if you've got half a dozen people who you work closely with and you can chart how they've done well, you know, there's almost no way even within the promotion process. I mean, I'm in faculty affairs and the whole promotion process it gives vague kind of lip service, to be honest, with these kind of things, but we have no way of even quantifying or keeping track of it. So, you know, even if you think about it, so if someone comes to you saying, will you be my mentor? Yeah, and what do you do when you say that? When somebody, have, have any of you had people, your junior faculty or fellows, come to you, will you be my mentor? You know, and the, the first question in my mind, like I said in this talk, like, well, what do you mean? What is it you're looking for? Because if you come to me and ask me, my first reaction is, I don't have time. Or, you know, what am I going to get myself into? Especially these days, you know, there isn't any free time. So I think it's much more important to say, have people come and say, will you help me work through my career plan and strategy? Okay, if somebody comes to me and asks me that, I can do that. I can't, you know, I, I can't commit to being a mentor because I don't know what that means. But if you can come to me with a few specific things you're looking for, okay, I can deal with that. I can create an idea in my mind, is this something I can do or not? Do I have the time for it now or not? It's like, no, I can't do it this month. I've got double service. My, my kids are in plays at the school, and I don't have time now. But you know, next month, I could do this. You know, and so get it very concrete. The more we get really concrete about this thing, I think the better off we're going to be. Our tenure, uh, we generally in the department had little idea of how they were doing. Uh, and that was uh, a problem because uh, some folks would come up for, for promotion or tenure and just not be ready. So we had a mandate from our chair, uh, who is now dean, of course, um, to develop a uniform mentoring program across the, uh, across the department. So I was working at that point with Bill Lowe, who was vice chair for research. Um, and so we, we did what, what many times uh, groups do, and, and Bill and I went off and thanked Deep Thoughts uh, and came up with, uh, with something that sounded really good to us, and uh, we implemented it. And so, as you might uh, guess from that description, 
Um, there were some issues with what we developed um, because we did not get input uh, from either the divisions or the faculty. But let me tell you about what it was we came up with and, and thought was such a, such a great idea. So I, of course, have a PhD. And uh, as I was in graduate school, I had a uh, thesis committee, uh, a group of folks who helped me think through uh, how I was doing and my research. And so that seemed like a really good model. Um, because, as, as you learned from Rick's talk, not one person can provide all the things that a junior faculty member needs. So we thought, well, this committee would be a great idea. You could have a scientific mentor um, who, who could uh, help you focus your research. You could have a uh, clinical mentor who could help you in your clinical areas. You might have your division chief involved um, because they're the, the key to your success. So, Getting this group of three or four people together would give you all the tools you need. And that committee would meet every year, and you would develop an annual professional development plan, and in the packets that we passed out are, are copies of those professional development plans, basically said of what grants are you going to uh, submit, what papers are you going to write, uh, what are your goals, uh, um, as well as what have you done first lately, what, was, uh, what did you accomplish in the last year. And I, I should step back and say that because Bill and I were, were focused on research, this program was really tailored or designed for the research faculty, but there was nothing about it that wouldn't be um, applicable to clinical faculty and clinical educators as well. We just didn't have the wherewithal to manage all 300. Uh, we could manage our 40 little tenure track uh, assistant professors and, and that worked well. So, um, you know, put your filters and your lenses on as I talk about this. If you're in the clinician educator branch, uh, think about how these things might play out with, um, uh, with clinicians. So, um, in addition to the professional development plan, we also thought that this uh, concept of 360 degree uh, review uh, made sense, that we would ask the the, the mentor to review the mentee, but, and also the mentee to review the mentor, uh, because there were clearly problems there where uh, the mentor was not doing their job. And, gee, wouldn't it be great to have that feedback so that, that we could work with the mentors and, and, and know where there are problems in that. So all of this made, made brilliant sense to us um, uh, in, the, in the department uh, uh, central, uh, central place. So, as I say, we focused on research faculty. Um, it was not just tenure track because we had a number of folks who were uh, not in the tenure track but primarily doing research. Um, the division chief would nominate who those folks uh, should be who would participate. And we had around 40 uh, assistant professors in, in all of the different tracks. Um, this was administered by me uh, in, the, uh, uh, in the department. And what that really meant was that I badgered the faculty by email. Um, it's time to get your committee together. It's time to submit your professional development plan. We haven't heard from you about your professional development plan. It's, it's, uh, it's overdue. It's now really overdue. We really need this professional development plan. Where is it? So that was, that was what we did. So after all of that badgering, including the fact that those emails would state, Dr. Jameson thinks this is incredibly important that you participate in this, uh, at best, we got half to two-thirds of the eligible folks to submit their professional development plans. Um, and that was after three or four emails. I'd stop people in the hallways. I'd show up in their offices. This just was not, uh, not a high priority. Um, and even those who participated, we would get this professional development plan, but we would not get the, the mentor reviews or the mentee reviews. So those just never arrived. Um, those that uh, participated the most needed it the least. Um, it's, it's sort of a truism that uh, folks who most need mentoring think they don't. Uh, they think they know everything, they've been in school for 20 years, damn it, they don't need anyone to tell them what to do. Um, and so uh, we, we had problems there. Um, there were definitely problems over the four years that we did this uh, that were not identified by this review. Everyone, the, the mentors and the division chiefs would say, yes, this person is doing fine. And then all of a sudden, three or four years later, we would find uh, out that no, um, they never, the, men, the junior faculty person never talked to their mentor. Um, the mentor had left and uh, hadn't been replaced, uh, that this person wasn't getting any grants. So there were all kinds of problems that did not, um, were not uncovered by this system.